it's a sad tale of how you got it. Mm. My dad said, Josh, there's been an issue with um, the medicals. It's the brain scan. He just all of a sudden said, you'd be reckless ever to step back in the ring. Be told that when you've come so far, mm -hmm. That just shattered me completely. It was mm. horrific. Would you still box if you could? I'd put my running shoes on right now and, and go and box. This is the George Groves Boxing Club. I'm George Groves. This is Deck, and today we are with Josh Pritchard. Yeah. yeah. So the last oh, final that's... remember of the of the um, Shane McGuigan's gym. Maybe well, ever we've on got the Lee pod. now. Oh yeah, Lee Cutler, yeah. yeah. Chaos Cutler, we haven't had him Lee yet. Cutler. Yeah. And another chap from the corner. Of course, yeah. My corner. Your corner too. Your corner. Yeah, yeah. Not the yeah. corner in Swindon. Yeah, I haven't done any decks. So. No. But Shane McGuigan's gym, that means we have to ask you first and foremost, goat update. Yeah. Before we get into anything else, there's a pet goat in the stable. Mm. Pun intended. <laughs> uh, what can you tell us about goat gate? Well, I have no idea about this goat. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. We spoke about it pretty free. Phantom for, goat. Yeah, maybe 90 seconds mm -hmm. about this goat today. About this him. pre. Oh, did pre you spoke to him today? Oh, I spoke to him today. Okay, what did he say? Um, as as we was taping his hands, um, <laughs> saying, where's the goat? Why have you not spoke about the goat? So, I mean, I don't know when he bought it. Mm. I mean, if he bought it a couple of months ago, yeah. he's just kept it quiet. Yeah. But like It's hard said, to keep a goat quiet. Famously, well, like well, it's not at home. That is it. That's what he said. He's still at the. He's still at the. Gu he's still at the. Sh the farm yeah, until no, the extension is done. The farm. He, he's, yeah. he's given it to matey. But then he wants to take it to. Um, he wants to take it home eventually. Well, we we said we need to make more of the goats. So maybe yeah. ring walk with it. Hundred percent. He's on the lead. Remember Montana Love had the dog, didn't he? But Adam as long could as have it isn't cruel, because like no, goats love I'm boxing events. Up. <laughs> yeah, don't make that. it don't make it cruel. Yeah. Right? Don't make it do tricks. Yeah, we're here for goat goat uh rights. I wanna make sure that it's enjoying itself. Like well, like mm. a craft. Give him a little a team is in top. Yeah. Has it got I mean hopefully it's got the horn so it looks pretty mean. Yeah, I've not seen a photo of Tootsie. it. Tootsie. Yeah, neither have we. He said he'd send us a picture because I was of the opinion, I was like, does this even exist? Has he just imagined it? Yeah, well, well until we see it, it's like a phantom girlfriend, isn't it? It's like has he really got a goat? Um, Are you saying the goat is his phantom girlfriend? I'm just saying it's a weird one to pull out of the bag. No one's seen the goat yet. Well, well, all his I'm dad not. has seen is mud in the car. He hasn't actually seen a goat. Yeah. Even Hassan hasn't seen it. Uh, he's seen the mud in the car. Yeah, that's all he's seen. Right, okay. So it could be an elaborate um, sort of alibi. That definitely wasn't Hassan just walking <laughs> down the back seat. <laughs> right, listen. <laughs> anyway, and that's the end of the podcast today. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, we've got the Josh goat. here. Um, what are we talking about, George? I think this is going to be an inspirational episode. I'm yeah. Ex I'm excited. No, absolutely, because Josh has got a fantastic story. It's still evolving. It's nowhere near finished mm. yet. Where's but can we do the bit that like, that I know you best for in that you was like a coach in the gym, mm. but you'd be like assistant coach on the night to Shane McGuigan who was running the mm -hmm. corner. So you're now a full-time coach for Lee. Mm. Uh, but you're also an assistant coach in the McGuigan gym. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so assistant coach deck. What do you think? Yeah, assistant coach. But it's like <laughs> you're building. You're building. Yeah, because mm -hmm. this yes. is. But how old are you now, Josh? Just turned twenty nine. So twenty nine year old assistant coach. So that's where the that's where the beauty of this story is mm -hmm. because there ain't many twenty nine year old assistant coaches in a in a stable and a gym with multiple world champions and whatnot. Yeah, and obviously it's a sad tale of how you got here, mm, yeah. but inspiration. And I don't think oh, ju not just for people in boxing, but people who get bad news or mm. have mad hurdles or get the sort of rug pulled out from underneath them mm. that you can reinvent yourself like you did. But yeah, yeah. and you you were you were assistant when you were boxing, so that was five yeah. years ago. So you were twenty four then. Yeah, so I mean, I, I I was with Shane and Barry when I was twenty. So this is like my 10th year oh, with the family. Get a testimonial. Yeah, so. A watch, maybe. <laughs> or a goat. I'm happy with a goat. watch. <laughs> yeah. Or a goat. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I'd like to say that I've served a pretty cool apprenticeship. Mm. How did like, you first meet the guys? Like, So. Obviously I know, but. <laughs> yeah. So I had a phone call. My old man had a phone call um, to come up and spar Frampton when he was boxing uh, Kiko for his world title shot. And um, he had some spar and pull out. So he, Barry called the army. I quite often went up the army as an amateur, sparred all the lads up there. And um, they said, Barry, we've got no one available, but we have this lad, aggressive, come forwards, 
His name's Josh. Here's, here's his dad's number. So Barry called my old man and um, they obviously had a conversation about it. And then my dad called me. And I remember, you know, as an amateur where you always have like six weeks off, well, not maybe six weeks off, but you have a break after the season's finished. Mm. So I was in that period. And in I was summer? Just, yeah. yeah. So I was just ground working at the time. So I was just like digging footings, in drains, bit of deep drainage, just, you know, working the road as such. And uh, my old man called me. He went, you never guess who I just got the phone to. It was like, who? He went, Barry McGuigan. I went, oh yeah. He went, do you want to spar Frampton? I went, I ain't sparred yet. It's still the end of the season. I'm not really been in the gym, dad. You'll be all right, it's tomorrow. I went, sound, I'll ask for the day off then. <laughs> so I went to the foreman. You were 20? You were yeah, 20 this I was point, 20, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I went to the foreman and he said, uh, well, we sort of need you tomorrow. I was like, come on, give me a day off, like, <laughs> I gotta go. So he gave me the time off, went up there. It was like the weirdest thing, like seeing people who you watch on TV, sort of seen in many interviews and whatnot, and then seeing their faces in the flesh, I was like, this is bizarre. And um, obviously I was extremely nervous. I think he had Gary Buckland in there sparring. The he, first. He's mental as well in Buckland. Yeah, he used to wear like a scrum cap, <laughs> like a rugby scrum cap rather than a head guard. <laughs> and, no, and no hand wraps I've heard as and well. And gum shields, didn't rate gum shields either. <laughs> so um, anyway, he'd done like, I don't know what it was, six rounds with him or something. Maybe he was doing 10, so it was like six and four and I was finishing off the last four. Had you been in the pro gym at any point up until? I sparred a couple of local pros when I was like growing up. Where was local for you? Portsmouth. Mm. So like local pros there from like when I was 16 to like 18 or started like mixing with them a little bit, but not too much to be honest. Yep. And um, yeah, so like I, so Gary does the, the first six. Um, I remember it was the first time I've ever been asked to check the gloves or anything like that. You know, like when you go into a pro gym. So like Barry come over, swap my gloves over. I had these, I was <laughs> gutted. I had these, my mum and dad bought me um, these Reyes, these yellow Reyes gloves. Brand new, never been worn because it's our season. Barry went, oh no, put these on. So I was thinking, oh, okay, I really want to wear them, but that's all right, okay, we'll just do that, no worries. Um, swapped the gloves, warmed up, jumped in there. And uh, I remember dad just saying, just, you know, just be, be defensive, but just hit him as hard as you can. I went, I'm good at that. Okay, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> um, and that was it, I'd done, done four, made a good account of myself. And um, the rest is history, that was, that was it. Got sort of a, a call back to finish the rest of the camp in London which I was absolutely buzzing with. And um, and yeah, it just all, it all went for there, really. That basically proves then the callback means this kid really? was decent, was, this was good. Mm. It means like your job done for you. Well, yeah, I think it just means that it's, it's, you know, it's good work Useful. for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean? like you're, you're obviously a talent there. So, but yeah, once you get the callback, that, that's it really. So I just done the best I could. Barry said, can you do six next, on, ne six next rounds? And I was like, yeah, I think so. Okay, all right, yeah, I'll do that. And then that, that was it, really. Mm. How, how, so you're an amateur at this point, boxing mm -hmm. three threes? Three threes, yeah. So had you done, how, like, how, what was the most rounds of sparring you'd done in, in the club? Like, back Probably to back? like five, yeah, six. Yes, so you'd never really, really max. done, yeah, yeah. Yeah. With, and then with a the pro. Well, yeah, like, I mean, like, down in Portsmouth, I never really had much sparring. Like, we used to go to boxing three days a week or, or something like that. Mm. And now you should run and just like do do some weights. When I turned like 18, 17, my dad was like, right, let's do some strength and stuff. Um, so I used to do that, but then I didn't really have a lot of boxing. Like I didn't used to punch loads, nothing to what the lads get now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the sparring was pretty limited. So it was it was a completely <laughs> different scenario for me. What, what was yeah. the first, George, can you remember the first time you were invited to a pro gym and had to spar someone that maybe recognizable face that you'd seen on TV before? Um. The first time I went to a pro gym to spar uh, was John Eames' gym, and he was at West Ham Amateur Boxing Club yeah. then. And uh, a guy who boxed at our club, Lee Beavis, he was training with John Eames, and he sort of took us down there. I, f I can't remember who the dude was. Not a big name. Um, I think he needed the sparring, so that's why we went. Um, and I just wanted to go and spar a pro. And Mick, my amateur coach, went with us. Lee went. I can't remember if Lee got in with us or met us there was good mm. and he said put that on i'd never wore a protector before like you used to have a, like a cup yeah, as an yeah. amateur <laughs> but this was an actual protector and they went stick that on i was like it's, it's a weird, it's goes a weird he, might, he might whack yeah. you up the nuts and then over the years like mick tells the story now that yeah he was dirty this fellow and you know he was gonna hit you up yeah. the nuts you know so um 
that was the first time I was at the pro gym. Mm. Did you have ambitions to be a pro at this age? Like, and did you see this as like a massive opportunity maybe? Yeah. So like, I, I remember saying to my dad, maybe after that season was done, you know, we'll make this our, our last season and we'll, then we'll turn pro. And my, and my dad always said, well, you know, there's not loads of opportunity down here on the South Coast. So I want you to go to London. So, but, you know, my dad trained me as an amateur. We went to several different clubs at the time, but, and then he sort of eventually took over, but he, he was, he never boxed himself or nothing. He had a, um, a karate background when he was a kid and then he played squash and my mum at a very good level. So, but yeah, he, he just, he knew that London was where the opportunities were going to be, where the good coaching was. So, but, but other than that, it, it sort of just all, all came together. Mm. So you were 20 at this point. So then when did it, when did the opportunity arise off the back of that to turn pro? Was it straight away? Mm. And was it with Barry, with Cyclone at that point? Were yeah. they like, right, let's turn you over. You've got opportunities here, move to London. Like how did that go down? Yeah, correct, yeah. So like, so after Carl's fight finished, after the camp finished, he, won the, he went on and won the world title. And then I got a call from Barry maybe a couple of weeks after and it was like you know son i want you to come up shane wants to do a bit of training with you see how you get on went up there went to the battersea gym mm. hit some pads with shane that went obviously really well and then it was just we went and had a chat in the butcher and grill next door um and and just put a contract in front of me and said we'd love love for you to turn pro with us you know we'll look after you, this and that and sort of scoped a little little plan for me and um and that was it January 2015 was 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 when I officially turned pro, done my medicals, and, and it was all clear, and, and off we went, and we, we stayed in a house um, in Battersea, and 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 that was it. Mm. So that was when was the debut? Soon after February 28th, February 2015. 2015, yeah, yeah, on the undercard of Frampton Avalos. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay. So these were cyclone shows. Yeah. Is that a cyclone yeah, show? Yeah. So obviously you've done the deal with mm. Heyman as well. Frampton. Yeah. So did you, yeah, how many fights did you have in that first year then, 2015? So I had five altogether. Just your usual learning fights against journeymen. Um, but yeah, the, f the first one was in February on, on the, on the card of Frampton Avalos for Cyclone Promotions. And then I'm trying to think, I think maybe I boxed on, on three Cyclone shows or two. And then the rest was sort of like smaller. So yeah, it would have been three. And then it was like, um, selling tickets on the small hall shows mm. to, to make the five up. Yeah. So then fast forward then 2016, mm. when did it, when did it all kind of fall apart then? Like when did you get the, was it initial scan? Was it normal routine board stuff, medical stuff? Like how did it, how did that unfold? Cause you must've been feeling pretty good about yourself. Cause you've got a manager, like you've got this deal mm. you're flying, won all your fights, been busy as well, active that first year. Mm. What are you five and oh at that point? Yeah, five and oh. Then what happened? So the year came to an end, successful year, had loads of in-house sparring. So I was sparring Frampton throughout the whole year. Um, Josh Taylor, Kikachi, obviously now he's boxing Cordina. Yeah. Um, had loads, you know what it's like in London, you, you can get loads of sparring. So. It was a brilliant year, not not so much with the fights, like you know, learning fights, but I had super hard sparring all year. So I was feeling in a great spot. I've come from working, ground working, doing, you know, labor and, and whatnot to to having this deal. So I'm feeling like this is, you know, I've, I've made it, this is brilliant. Was you a full-time pro? Did you quit work? Yeah, so Barry made it, but, well, Barry and the family, they made it sustainable so I could just live in the house down the road in Battersea. Yeah. It, it was, Barry put a tab behind the butcher and grill. So we went in there, got our, got our breakfast, got our lunch, got our dinner. So I was like coming from a very normal, you know, working on the roads or whatever to having all of this. I was like, this is class. Do you mm. know what I mean? So, and then had Christmas 2015, 2016, Frampton's in camp preparation for Scott Quigg. So doing a bit of sparring, working with him that count, working with Shane, just as normal. And then I come to renew my annual medicals for the British board. And that's obviously when all the, the trouble started happening. Mm. In So I think the fight was in February of 2016. And I was going to be on the undercard, probably as a live float. So that was a massive show yeah, for me. Manchester Arena, mm -hmm. that one, yeah. Yeah, I was really looking forward to that. It was a massive show. 
And um, I think we was in your gym at that point, weren't we, George? Could have been, yeah. I joined the gym at the the very end of 2015, yeah. and I boxed January 2016. First fight with Shane. Yeah. And was that in our gym? Yeah. It was I think it, was I, I remember. I, over, so yeah, it might have been my gym. Yeah. yeah that's right. Because I think for the Christmas, um, December 2015, I think we moved out of Battersea, and we were sort of then going to George's gym and David Hayes' gym. So I remember I was training hard for that. And then Barry says, uh, he, phoned my, he phoned my dad. And I went home on the weekend and my dad said, Josh, there's been an issue with um, the medicals. It's the brain scan. I was like, okay, no problem. We'll just get another one. Like, it's no stress. He went, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I, you need to go for another scan. I think we need to chat to a few people. But it was never made into a big deal. Mm. You know, like, how do you tell someone it's bad news, you know, in that sort of situation? So I was like, okay, so, you know, done another scan and, and then the the telling point was Barry went and um, arranged to see a specialist. And it was myself, my mum and dad, and Barry. Um, so it was four of us in the room and this a specialist, and it was to get some advice. And I, and it was in it was in London. And I thought we was going up there and we was gonna have a chat with this guy and it was going, it's gonna be all right, it's just this and it's just that. Because I, I originally got told, oh, it's a bleed. I was like, have I had a bleed? Like, you know, I feel fine. So it turns out it wasn't a bleed. Anyway, so we see the specialist and he's doing some tests on me. Everything seemed fine. And then um, he just all of a sudden said, Josh, you'd be reckless ever to step back in the ring. And like, you know, when you sort of like zone out and I was just like, what? Like, and, and it just, it, it didn't obviously really sink in then, but it was just to be told that when you've come so far, mm -hmm was just, uh, just shattered me completely, it was mm. horrific. Because no one had prepped you for that either, you had no idea just, that that was coming. Yeah, I felt like I walked in blind almost. Oh. I knew there was a problem, but it was like, I felt like it was always gonna get resolved, mm. you know? That's what boxing is, boxing is essentially a series of problems <laughs> yeah. that you have to, that you're like, well, we'll figure that out, yeah. get around that, get around that, get around that. You wonder, the question is like, well, how do we get around it? Or was the question straight away like, I need to quickly come to terms with I'm not going to box anymore. Do you know how you felt right there and then? Well, it, of course, at the time, it was like, well, we'll get in a second opinion, we'll get a second opinion. And and we did. So the, the British board said, right, we want you to go see this specialist down in Southampton. And uh, so we'd done that. And it was of his opinion that I was fine to box. I was like, okay, wicked. That's great. He, he So I've got something called a Cavanova. So he specialised in, in that sort of area. He was like, fine, you know, rugby players have got it, absolutely fine. There's no sort of extra danger through trauma for this thing. I was like, okay, that's fine. So I felt you sort of got a little lift. I was like, okay, cool. And then went and got another opinion from a guy who specialises in Cavanovas and he was a professor in Edinburgh. And um, Barry paid sort of a, a lot of money for him to come down and have this meeting with the board. And it was of his opinion I was fine to box, but it was right around the time that Nick Blackwell had his incident with Eubank, um, and I think there was another couple of sort of fatalities around that sort of time, and it, it felt to me that the board already sort of made their opinion of it before I even went into that meeting, so yeah, I, I did have a couple of opinions that I was fine to box, which was uh, a bit of pillar, a bit of pill to swallow, um, but I think the board sort of because of the fatalities they sort of was like i'm not gonna risk this mm. also what's a cavanova were you born with it or yes yeah yeah so i was born with it so the, the point is is like they missed it in the first game yeah but the problem is is obviously each year they're developing these new machines they're, they're clearer and clearer and clearer and as we know more and more people are failing brain scans so it's i think it's just going to continue to get worse but so yeah it's, it's, it, it was it was a, it was a tough one yeah if um, on the advice that you've been given from all the people you spoke to, would you still box if you could? I'd put my running shoes on right now and, and go and box. Mm. Could yeah, and there's places around the world where you could box with what yeah. you've got, yeah. Like well, there'd be states in America that would we we sent get your it to, we sent it to the states, and I think like Texas were like I'm in Iron, Nevada. I'm not sure if they said yes or no. So I don't think. It, it wasn't looking good either way and, and obviously if you're going to be in the pros you want to do well out of it you want to 
build a, a, a following and you want to you know obviously earn money out of it because you, you're risking your you're risking your life doing it so if it wasn't sort of a definite yes and what worth doing if i had to go abroad and, and maybe not not build a fan base and like what what you know it's going to be it's going to be a struggle mm. so. so then what did you at what point then did you go okay that's I'm not going to box I'm well, that, not going to do that that must have been the big decision that yeah, was I mean, 2016 that, yeah that, so that whole process sort of dragged out with the meetings and whatnot the board mm. that dragged out the whole of 2016 pretty much so after getting told that I went back to Portsmouth and I was going up and down to London in George's gym in, in um, David Hayes gym training with Shane here and there probably like three days a week um, obviously not allowed to spar of course and that's what the British board said because I was suspended so I got a part time job at Michael Kors selling handbags oh yeah any good um, eh? very good yeah. for some reason <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah got got a part time job so that was tough obviously going full time training with Barry and the team and Shane and then going to get a normal 9 to 5 again part time that was pretty tough but uh, so that that made up a 2016 and then on New Year's Eve, I think it was, got a call from Sandra, Barry's wife, Shane's mum. And she said, uh, hi Josh, how you doing? On whatever day it was, 7th of January, whatever day it was, would you like to go to Vegas? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to work with Shane? Like, you know, help Shane out, sort of bit act as his assistant? Yeah. You know, like, we'll, we'll pay you, we'll do it, give you a salary. And, and you know, I was like, yeah. <laughs> This is way better than being a Michael Kors, <laughs> absolutely. So, but I think oh, I was at that time, and even after a couple of years, really, I really wanted to box, you know, like that. That So like the coaching thing, I was absolutely loving what I was doing with Shane. But in the back of my head, I would really struggle to process, I'm now not boxing, you know, mm. so, but. You didn't show that. You did really mm. well not to show that yeah. in the gym, I think. It was an intense time in the gym. And then they Cyclone had that show at the end of 2016. They promoted it. I'd boxed on that show and fought Eddie Goodnick to oh, yeah. collapse in the changing room. Had a um, a bleed on the brain, I think, something, you know. So yeah. it was, it was, you know, we had Nick Blackwell in the gym for the camp that you had with Eubank where he got injured. Then we had this and we had that. And then you're in the gym. And I remember when I first heard the news about you, I was like, I'm just going to fucking have her opinion. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's out. fine it, well, yeah. yeah he's fine he's fine he's mm. walk it off and then it then like no but then you're like you're thinking oh actually no um what if something bad did happen like that's it's brave and gutsy it's got to be horrible for josh but fair play to him for for not like fighting it mm. and, and sort of reinventing yourself in the gym because mm. he was great like he was great yeah great um personality to have in the gym you know what i mean that's what essentially a good gym is you know it's good people who are all on the same wavelength vibing together that's when the success comes and some gyms go up and down for that but so that's where you are it was two, 2017 now yeah and yeah you, so you you would i think i went to that vegas trip that's when you did so that yeah cruise, right? uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Two. so santa, yeah. santa cruz we all stayed in the frampton mansion um yeah, uh, Shane said, come. I was like, it's Frampton mind? Like, he said, oh, we've got a massive house. It's fine. I said, you sure? Because I, I knew Frampton, but I never really spoke to Frampton like that. Mm. You know, the past never really crossed. And um, yeah, we went out there. It was a good little trip up until the end when, you know, mm. I think Fram Fram that's when Frampton got beat. And yeah, Santa Cruz got yeah, beat. Yeah, point, but yeah. Um, yeah, I'd been on the scene long. Uh, <laughs> 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 it was good, did not it? Josh Taylor was out there. He boxed on the other card. He boxed right. well. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah. that that there that was my first introduction of being in the corner of Shane. Fucking hell! Not a bad Las show. Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Not a bad show to turn up to. So, so yeah. So that that Vegas trip was was we out there for like three weeks? Maybe it was out there for a few weeks. I don't mm. know if I was out there the whole time. Mm. You guys might. Have I think the boys were out there for a little bit longer. But mm. I, I think I spent maybe about three weeks. Maybe just under, but I think it was three weeks. Do you yeah. think? Um, do you think being in the gym, getting that opportunity straight away, to be back in the gym and to be back involved in boxing, made it harder or easier the f to come to terms with the fact that you wouldn't be doing that anymore? You wouldn't be doing the punching anymore? Well, 
I think it did help, but it also made it worse. Kept you there. It's sort of like, I think people, when they finish boxing, they sort of almost have a break from boxing mentally. And then they go into either managing, they go into coaching, but they have that break mm. from being a fighter where I didn't. So I think like I was looking at it like, I'd maybe watch people spy and think, yeah, but I'd do this and I'd do that. And oh, I'd, I'd love to have a go. So <laughs> it was like, sort of like, I had no break from it really. But look, I mean, I got given an amazing opportunity, but there's not many people that are given that opportunity. So, and I think there's thousands of people that would love to jump in my shoes and take my job of being on being on the um being on the team and mm. working under Shane so you know I, I knew that I was given an amazing opportunity I took it with both hands so but you know what it, it was a, it was a difficult time for myself mm. what was George like because that, that Shane, <laughs> Shane had been be as harsh as you want but Shane had been obviously with Frampton but you know like then then there was this change mm. and then like David Hay was turned up and like George Groves was there and then suddenly you got massive names there and Shane is now the head coach for big names in world title fights and stuff like that. What was it like? What was George like at that time? Wicked. Yeah. A great personality. Like it was, it was, it, it felt really, really cool to, to, to be in that stable um, and to have the big names in there as well. So, you know, D David Hayes, a character as well. Um, that was obviously the first time I, that I met David it was, it was in the gym, but um, it, you know, George obviously brought a lot of experience and, and so does David as well. Um, but Shane was busy at that time. Like he was floating from from Jim, from George's into um, David's until we got a solid base. Um, so I think that that was a, a stressful time for for Shane to to work with that. But for me, from like terms of a coaching perspective, like I've never coached before. And then never, so, not even at the club. You'd never done anything. No, held pads. Not really. Wow. So it was like, I had to <laughs> learn quick on yeah, the job yeah. here. So that's what I'm saying, like <laughs> Vegas was very much like, okay, I'm here for three weeks. I'm watching Shane, you know, like everything he does, like taping hands. Cause obviously in our gym, we tape everyone's hands. But like, I don't think they do that in a lot of pro gyms, mm. but we make sure everyone's hands are taped. So I had to learn the system quickly. Obviously Shane used to take my hands and I used to watch that. I was quite observant with that, knew how it felt. But to then go and do it on other people was, was interesting so um i remember after the vegas trip shane went with david to miami i think to train that was a bellu fight wasn't it yes yeah first one the first one mm. uh was it the yeah it was when it they was. drink drinking the protein the shake in the martini glass yeah, yeah. right so <laughs> i went back to i think i went back to wandsworth and i was you know look, looking after the gym and and whoever was in there trying to take him through conditioning sessions and i remember shane I remember texting Shane going, oh, Shane, I've, um, I'm practicing taping hands and stuff. And I was taping hands on Daryl Richards, um, the old S&C <laughs> coach. <laughs> and um, he was like, Shane said, send me a photo of your work, mate. I've got, got, to, see, got to see it. So I sent him a photo. I was like, yeah, it's pretty good, mate. Do this and do that. So, but that was it. I dived straight in. Mm. So your mindset at that point, you are like, well, I'm eyes open, got to learn loads. Um, were you ready to like f voice your opinion on stuff or are you just thinking now nah, let's just back sit yeah, back yeah. and hang back yeah <laughs> yeah of course like i mean it's this is this is like rules for any yeah, yeah. Uh, for any up and coming keep, keep wanting to be up, uh future well coaches. i think i think obviously you've boxed yourself you've boxed at a, you know a good level in the amateurs and then you've you've turned pro so you have a good base knowledge of of boxing and of understanding what works but then to then to sort of switch on your coach's brain not everyone boxes the same as what you did so then it's then learning each individual athlete on, on what works for them so no so i i definitely didn't start shouting advice <laughs> when everyone was sparring oh, george no, go self pull mate no. <laughs> um, so now I, I very much sort of hung back listened learned sort of understood and then over over the years of i've learned shane's sort of way of doing things how he sees it and and then having a just a a great base level of knowledge of, of what works and what doesn't work. Cause that, cause at that time, correct me if I'm wrong, both of you, but Shane was under a little bit of scrutiny as well, because he would have David Hay, for instance, older than him. You're older than Shane. So he's mm -hmm. you, you got, and then Shane's in the corner telling you what to do. He has to back himself that much mm -hmm. to be like, this is what you should do, mate. I don't care what you've done before. And if you say this is wrong, I can imagine David Hay has his own ideas about how things should be done and whatnot. Did you ever feel like that? And how quickly did you go, oh, right now, I just trust this person completely? 
Yeah, I, I like Shane uh, and I liked his philosophies on boxing and he never tried to um, reinvent the wheel with me. He never tried to change me as such. It was so I was comfortable with it. I confidence in him because he had success with Frampton. Mm. And I was like, yeah, he's, you know, I don't think he had Frampton from brand new, but he, ha he had Frampton from an early pro stage and got him right to the top. And I liked the way they fight. Um, and I knew he wasn't comfortable with the Hay situation. It's like, you know, uh, you know, Hay, Hay, Hay was a l significantly older than both of us. He knew his own thing. His body was struggling. And so he was, um, he would be sparing with stuff. Yeah. I know that, like, for example, Shane wasn't happy with the amount of sparring he was doing and stuff like this. And Shane, Shane and David can talk about that themselves. There was maybe pressure on Shane. Maybe, but I didn't really feel like it. I felt like he was not winning. Not he just pressure. kept, yeah, yeah. That, he kept winning. Yeah. So people were very interested in him, and especially mm. when David chose to go there. They, yeah, I remember being like, "Whoa, okay, that's that's a big move." And obviously, it's not na like now where he is clearly like that mm. stable and him and what he's established. Yeah, like the number one. Then he wasn't. Yeah, I, I think I think um, even Joe Gallagher but before the quick fight was mm. like, oh, "You're just a PE teacher." Yeah, exactly. Remember like, that? Yeah, you know, but. Every coach has got to start somewhere. And then what we knew in the gym, how, how Shane was teaching everyone and, and the vibe it was, we knew we was doing good stuff. Mm. But you, you have to you have to prove it. Mm. Let's talk a bit about being the assistant then at this point. Like what exactly, because not not everyone has one or what, mm. certainly not one that, that is kind of as involved as you throughout the years. Like what do you, day to day back then, what were you, what did he task you with? What was he like, right, Josh, can you just take care of this? Cause I need to do this. Like, what were you doing? So Practically. Li little things like taping the hands, yeah. that, that was always something that I jumped into and then, you know, like help warming up, mm. maybe do a couple of drills or, or whatnot, uh, do the conditioning. Like I would also always do a circuit on a Wednesday or, or whenever during the week, you know, got, got tasks of that. Um, but that was fine because I knew all that stuff mm. because I, I was in the system for a year myself. So I was very comfortable with doing that. Um, and then it was just sort of, you know, Shane didn't chuck me loads to do. He, he was aware that I was very much learning on the job, which was which was nice. So, obviously now day to day, I'm I'm sort of heavily involved. Warm up, wrap up, do this, do that. Obviously, I work with Ben Carraway now as well. He's a big help with all, with all the athletes. So, I do all them drills, activation stuff, and then do some pads, do some paddles, whether it's before or after, maybe a little bit drawing, whatever. So Shane does, you know, majority of all the pads and stuff. But I'm I'm well stuck in. Mm. What's your favourite thing to do in the gym? Um, watch sparring. Watch <laughs> sparring, yeah. But I love all of it. Like, I'd, honestly, I wouldn't change anything. Like, even if I won the lottery tomorrow, I'd still do the same job. I'd just have maybe a big house around the corner somewhere. <laughs> but um, I would still still do everything. I, I'd, I love the whole process. I love it. Mm. When you get, what's, what's the most exciting thing? Because you've had people come in, turn over, with you and, and go through the gears. People, world champion now, mm. like Ellie obviously turned up, won a belt with you. Like what bit is most fulfilling? And I'm talking just an assistant because we'll go on to Lee in a minute, but just, you know. Well, I think. What, where do the rewards the come? Mo the most fulfilling one at the moment is, is definitely the CBS. You know, like I was coaching or Shane's assistant at that time when CBS come in, I think I should probably know this. Um, and he'll curse me for this, but it was it 2017 or 2018? Mm, 18, I think. 18. The debut. Yeah, when yeah. he first came in the gym. So watching Chris go from coming to the Wandsworth gym, turning over pro, seeing where he was at back then, and then seeing his whole journey, becoming very good friends with Chris, you know, like he's one of our best mates, to now seeing him win a world title where he did w was, was pretty incredible. Um, you know, you you come close with all the fighters, so e every time they win a belt, it's it's lovely to be a part of that. Mm. Um, and and I think obviously we've got that documentary, fingers crossed, coming out. I think you'll you'll see that as well. We're we're a very close knit team. So, um, but yeah, seeing the most fulfilling part at the moment is is definitely Chris seeing his story go the whole way through and and winning that title. Mm. How do you facilitate? Let's take CBS for example. People see what he's achieved, and you've just alluded to what he's gone through. Hmm. how do you from a base level like make those changes like what's been the at the heart of those changes because not everyone can do it. it's not like you just have to turn up for five no. years and you'll get there many people no. don't like what what's been the key to it the improvement well 
Yeah. Firstly, he's, he's obviously had great training with like Shane and, and whoever he's been working with, Daryl at the time and Ben and, and whatnot. So he's had great, great training, great sparring over the years. But I think the most important thing is mindset. Chris speaks a lot about mindset. Um, but I, I think that's, that is the main thing that you need to, to just reach your full potential. Um, and I, I think he's definitely done that. But I'd say I'd say mindset is, is definitely the most important part. Mm. Have you spoke to him about mindset? Yeah, I think we speak to it. We speak about it quite quite a lot. But it's you, you're going to have sort of adversities in whatever you're doing, and all sports are hard. But like boxing it is a business, and there's it's just completely up and down the whole time. And if you can figure your you know settle yourself down and and back yourself and have faith in the process then you'll be fine what do you think is the key thing for you when you are the assistant coach that's like your most important attribute support just supporting what whatever the athlete needs supporting Shane whatever he needs um, do you feel like you've got a manage and take care of Shane like the lead guy as much as the fire because obviously you're all working towards this end goal mm. that sometimes the main trainer or the lead the lead cornerman or something does need yeah support. yeah of course like you know I, I, yeah I, I help Shane out on a, on a daily basis whether that's you know trying to get some sparring in whatever it may be definitely supporting in Shane and whatever he needs um, but you know like, I, I work with with the fighters and I do the, like do the condition, I do some of their strength as well. We'll do a lot of their strength now, most of them. So they're all different, but being being a support network for them, and obviously we have Jake the management as well. So that that's a solid network there we have. But I'd say support it is the main thing. Doing whatever that they need. What's the hardest thing about working with Shane? Be honest. He's always late. Is he? He's time we're a late gym yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we know because we turned up the other day and there was no one there stood outside in the fucking cold for about half an hour we, we do run late <laughs> we do run late look I think it's a stressful business so it's it's very up and down so um, Shane, Shane might be might be stressed might be up and down sometimes obviously he's got a young family as well mm. so that, that obviously doesn't help but um, he's, he's pretty solid all around Shane but um yeah, we we are definitely a late gym, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. No, I you get used to it. It's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> Look, it's pretty I mean, cool. Craig, Craig's pretty cottoned onto it already, so he's like, Craig "All Richards. right, I'm in at 10 a.m. on the schedule. I'm gonna turn up at half 10, and then I'll be yeah. fine." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever uh, been in a situation, maybe with Shane or someone in the gym, and gone, "Nah, this ain't the way to do it," oh. and then had to say it? Maybe you don't. Maybe you have. You don't even want to share it with us. Or have you ever been like, nah, I better sit on this, better not say it. Do you ever feel compelled, like, I've got to say something right now? No. Or are you like, that's only going to cause more aggravation? No, I'm going to be honest. No, not mm. really. Mm. I think that we may, may have slightly different opinions on, on minor stuff, but, but not really as a whole. And we're quite open, like, we'll chat about that. And I think we all do as a team, like especially CBS and stuff like that. Well, I think he might need some of that, or do you think that would work in that? And then we each might have like a minor difference in opinion, but it's pretty much it's pretty much similar, um, and and we're pretty open. We, we we'll chat about it and discuss it. And, and what about if someone new is going to join the gym? Will Shane say to you, "What do you think of this?" Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I yeah. think I think you, you touched on it earlier about making the gym a good vibe yeah like that's really important i think they could be a super talented fighter but if their personality may not fit then it might not work for us and shane said the other day alcohol free gym just about like none of you drink no he said no, like not cbs don't drink you yeah. and shane don't well i i may have one okay. now and again right, he's letting but the team down yeah sorry about that but that's very but on trend isn't it? yeah I'm yeah no i mean anymore. like there's a it's quite a teetotal gym, isn't yeah. it? Which is 
bizarre. That's very unusual <laughs> for, for boxers. They well like boring. To well boring. Yeah. We're having a drink now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the babies out again like Christmas. Yeah. Um, Honestly, the Christmas party was terrible. It's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> I hear as well. Ellie Scottney never been to a nightclub. Has she not? Never been to a nightclub. Apparently, Caroline wouldn't have been either. No. Yeah, that is the worst Christmas party going. <laughs> Fucking hope there's no stag do's either. Well, we just went bowling. It was bowling. <laughs> yeah. Went for a nice dinner. Who won? Completely clean. Obviously. Yeah, was it just like no, it was salmon that. and broccoli? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. We, Who we, won bowling? You, yeah. You went, yeah, we went to a restaurant, and then we went bowling. So we was all terrible. Jake was pretty good actually. Jake was his brother. Jake did was he win? Good. Did you have the barriers up? Um, did you use the no, thing Ellie like did. the kids used? Ellie you know? did though. Ellie had the barriers no, up. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no nightclub and barriers up for Ellie still. Yeah, that um, yeah, Christmas part bit. I mean, what a successful. Uh, you wouldn't want to sort of bump into you on the tube like you lot. We said that. Yeah. We all walked down to Leighton <laughs> Tube Station. We had like. No one trying to rob you. Me, Shane, the Chris, Lee, Craig, Ellie, Caroline, <laughs> Adam, Hassan. I mean, there was a. Who's the hardest? Is it Caroline? Yeah. Caroline. Would you hundred percent Caroline? Yeah, yeah. Out yeah. of all of them, it's probably Caroline Stand. the least you want to fight. Yeah. If someone's kicking off. Send Caroline. <laughs> she can go through. How good is Caroline Dubois? Like how, in terms of upside, in terms of like, if you were buying shares in someone, it just seems like she is. I'd happily put my house on it. Yeah. Yeah, like she's, she's really good. Mm. Like, probably the, the best talent maybe, mm. walking through. Just like, unbelievable movement, great shot selection, great feet, incredible power good chin like great chin like just she's got all of it and I'm really really excited for to, to see her go on and win not just one world title two so I think she's going to win several at different weights mm. she's pretty incredible Is have you got a single moment where you feel you've performed the best you could have performed it might have been every day yeah no well yeah well, it might be it might could be could be something you've come up with you're like right i'm changing the circuit today and it's, it's paid dividend or it might be a moment in the corner or in the changing room you might have solved a wobble or something you might have had a fantastic one-liner at the presser that went under <laughs> that's never happened <laughs> yeah, um, i'd probably have to say at the moment it'd be lee's yeah lee's latest win winning the english title that was really really nice really special for me um so that's the first time you've led a corner for a title fight for a title fight, yeah, I, I did have uh, Jack Kelly and Joseph Butler as well. Yeah, that was on small hall shows. Obviously, we re relocated to Leighton, so it didn't work. They had to be be at home. So, but obviously, I've done small hall shows. But Lee's was was a special night for myself. The f first title as a head coach, as a lead coach, and um, it was you know it was not loads of pressure, but there was a bit of pressure. It was the first first move for Lee, first fight with me and him together. It was on the undercard of Chris. You know, it was uh, it w it was nice. I f it was really really enjoyable. I had my father in the corner as well with me, so that was pretty special. So it was you two, you and y you and your dad, and then Shane and Barry were like behind you, weren't they? Yes, yeah, so they. I think they. T I don't know when they turned up. Yeah, did you know that was going to happen? No. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I was in the corner, and all of a sudden, I just heard Barry's distinct voice. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss like, it. I think that's Baz. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> and then. Um, and I could hear Shane. I don't know what round they turned up in. Maybe like halfway through or four. Maybe no, I was. They were quite early. Yeah, they were, were there from they? the start. Yeah. Might have been there from the start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. So I know obviously they're coming to the arena with Chris. So I, I, I didn't know didn't know when they went. But um, yeah, it was it was it was wicked. So it was myself. It was my my father, um, and Jumbo, mm. cuts me. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. right. But that was you know my dad's first one as well. Obviously he's got his license. So um, I was like, right. He went and watched them rap. That was all like a no experience. Oh, you, him, you so. sent him to do that? Yeah, Quality. yeah, yeah. Chuck do you know what he was looking for? <laughs> well, he seen me doing. I was like, right, Dad, you got to watch for this, and you got to watch for that. Yeah. Go on, off you go. <laughs> um, so he, so he loved that. But to have sort of him there, um, Jumbo doing the cuts, and then it was I, I'll never forget it actually. So like the fight, the, the fight finished. Lee jumped up on the corner, was like celebrating. And I looked down and I see see Shane there, and he was like screaming and giving it like yeah like mm. celebrating and sort of high-fived each other and that was like really nice for me you know because like it was like that's that's you know my fighter i've only worked with him for eight weeks but to see was shane eight to weeks yeah to yeah. see shane and barry really happy like that was that was lovely i mm. really enjoyed that what's the single best bit of advice you got from either of those shane or barry 
Is there anything to stand out? Because mm. that's a big change for you at 20 years old to go up there and become an assistant. Like, did anyone say anything like, to, you need say, to do this? I wouldn't say there's nothing that, that stands out, but just constant positive um, reinforcement that, you know, you're, you're doing the right things, you're, you're good at this, or you're, you know, just constant reinforcement. Mm. It builds confidence. Mm. Speaking of confidence, George. <laughs> <coughs> I've got a feature We've for got you. Feature, yeah. I've got a feature, yeah. <laughs> and will you uh, actually have a break and then we'll come back? Cause is, is this the best one? This done? is the best feature. Is it number one? Done, yeah. It's one. Team, teamwork, this one. Is it? Yeah, you two are in a team together. I've actually got, I, I do want to say a little story about George. Do it. Yeah? Yeah, now's the time. Come on, hit us. Better be a good one. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Hold it. Hold it there because we could probably sell some adverts here and people will come back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll have a break there and then we'll hear your story. Can't wait. George, remind me again, how I become an elite club member? Well, get a GGBC cap. Done. What else? Well, you could wear the hoodie. Anything else? Well, have you got a water bottle? <sighs> Anything else? You could get a print for the wall. It's cost me a fortune. Anything else? Well, this is what it takes to be elite, Deck. Does that mean I'm in the club now? Nearly. One last thing. Just hit the follow button in your podcast app. Welcome to the club, Deck. Oh, we'll have a push in a pool, mate. We're back. Right, we're back. Right, st I don't want to hear your feature yet. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Because <laughs> I've been on tenterhooks here. Tell us the, tell us right. the story, come on. Jordan. Are you worried? <laughs> I am, I really am. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's Better okay. not be incriminated. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you remember Philadelphia? Yeah. The city or the soft cheese? No. <laughs> <laughs> the song? Luke Campbell. Oh, when he right. boxed out there. Yeah. This, George nearly had a time to shine in the corner. In the corner? Yeah. Right, yeah. You're going to remember this. Mm. Mm. So, we go out during the day. So, Campbell's boxing out in Philadelphia. We go out during the day. We go get a bit of lunch. We all go get acai bowls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I think I know where it is. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 we all have acai bowls. I choose. That's um, like some like super healthy yeah. salad. Like, just for the listeners. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah some yeah. of the listeners, listeners all have are that. not all into. It's January. Yeah, that's all they're eating. Right, okay, so yeah. like, they're all on shreds as well. GGBC shreds group on Strava. There you go, God, yep. <laughs> so I opt for the whey protein, not the plant protein. And um, we eat that. All, so it's all fine. We go to the arena. We jump on the bus. We get there. All is well. We're in the changing rooms. Um, George is there, Chris is there, got, we've got the squad there. And uh, I don't know whether Luke is wrapped up at this point, or maybe he's getting wrapped up. And all of a sudden, you know when you get like a rush of heat and sick feeling, mm. of like, shit, I'm unwell, like I don't feel well here. I looked at Shane, and Shane went, you all right, Josh? You look a bit warm, mate. Sweating. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I'm fine. <laughs> I can't tell anyone I don't feel well. So I'm like, even when you go for a walk, mate, get some fresh air. I'm like, yeah, sound all right. So I walked down the corridor. I can't remember, was it? It was in a, it was some sort of arena when I can't remember what it was, but you know, like you have the big sort of walks to the arena, like inside. So I'm walking through there and you've got all the change rooms on the right hand side. I'm walking through, I'm like, oh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Just need a bit of fresh air, I'll be all right. So I like walk down the corridor, turn out into where the state, where the ring is, where all the stand is. So I'm all there. Uh, I feel sick. I'm going to throw up. So I turn around and I run. I run back and I burst into the nearest locker room. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell's opponent. <laughs> Turns out it's the main events dressing room. Oh, fuck. But they're not there yet because Luke was on a little bit earlier. <laughs> and in this locker room was like benches, hooks, like a proper like sort of school dressing room. And then the bathroom was at the back with a curtain burst in didn't even make the bathroom just spewed all over this floor just projectile <laughs> everywhere and it comes out red that was the acid oh, bowl oh yeah and i was like it done it like twice or three times i was like oh oh god got my t-shirt wiped my mouth i was like i can't tell anyone burst out the dressing room 
<laughs> thinking, oh, the main event's going to walk into that. Yeah. Right, because they've, <laughs> they've not even DNA. got there yet. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I walk back. I'm like, I can't tell anyone. It's fine. Don't want to worry anyone. So I go back in Luke's dressing room. Warming up. Everything's fine. Shane's like, you good, yeah? I'm like, yeah, sweet. <laughs> absolutely fine. Better out than in. Change my t-shirt quickly to a different one. He's like, okay, right. Moving on. Anyway, we get the knock. Hi, oh, boys, ready to go. I'm like, got my bag ready, got my stopwatch, got my water, got my towel. Uh, get into the corridor, we're walking down. Luke's in front, Shane's there, George is next to me, got the cameras walking behind. Okay, right, you've got this. You've got like 36 minutes max to hold this sick in. You're fine, you're good. Get there, all of a sudden, boom, it's there. So, you know when you get like that in yeah. your throat? Like, I turn around to George, hold this. Give him the little corner bag run back to dressing room and we had another lad in there as well he was fighting next after luke yeah it was nevin no that's it john joe nevin, nevin. so john joe nevin yeah i think it? so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. run back and then he like looks at me and i run back into the bathroom burst <laughs> the curtain just throw up five six times <laughs> oh my god the <laughs> smell was horrific it was so bad <laughs> run back like running George is like, this is my time. Yeah. I'm in the corner. I think I, think, I can't stuff. remember the exact story now, but I think at Shane I said, Angelo Dundee. He, he, he's, he's, he's dying. You can't have him in the corner. Mm. I'll do the corner. <laughs> <laughs> he's come all the way to Philadelphia. I'm stealing his pineapple. I'm like, yeah, you can't have him. In, he's, 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 he's knackered. Fucked, yeah. He's poor Josh. Give him the night over. I'll do it. I run. I run all the way back. Get there. Cheers, George. Thanks, mate. He's gutted. Oh. Right? So I'm like, go on. The elbow. So I sit there. Don't remember any of the fight, really. All I remember thinking was, stop him, because I'm going to throw up at any moment. <laughs> stop him. Right, anyway, Luke does stop him. Yeah. I don't know what round it was, but he stopped him. First round, you're like, empty the tank, yeah. legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, lions in the camp and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. So he stopped him. After the fight, get back. Shane, I'm really unwell, mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate, what's that smell? It's horrific. That, like, poor John Joe Never. It's, it's just horrific. Anyway, so I'm like, Baz, like, I'm really unwell here. I was like, okay, cool. All right, son, I'll get you. Get, we get on the bus and we go back. And I remember sitting at the bus. You know when you're unwell, yeah. you're not at home. You just want to be at home. Do you mm. know what I mean? Just, anyway. So we get back. Fortunately, I was sharing a room with Chris. Right. And if there was anyone I'd want to share a room with at that moment, it'd be CBS because he's going to look after you. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I've got food poisoning. Yeah. Right. So I'm just up till like. Should have got the plant protein. Yeah. Should have. Mm. Um, just up till like 2 a.m half one whatever it is just spewing <laughs> anyway i remember chris went and got me a, a ginger drink of some sort to stop me being sick good lad anyway remember going to bed waking up this day chris is like right let's take you to a doctor because we're flying today right I'm like, all right yeah cool go see a doctor yeah cool i feel great I feel fine now okay let's go get some food don't know if you should eat right now josh like you know now nah, i'll be fine I feel absolutely brilliant eat some chicken okay all good yeah right anyway and then we're flying it's an evening flight right so when we're sitting in the hotel lobby and it's like maybe 10 minutes to go to leave for the hotel all the bags are packed we're all sat in the lobby george is there everyone's there oh that Same. feeling comes back again burst out behind me in the toilet throw it all up again and i was sat next to you i was meant to be sat next to you in like uh we booked our seats and it was like maybe a little bit of extra leg room and he goes to me I'm not sitting next to you you're <laughs> ill I was like George I'm not ill mate I'm like I'm just got food poisoning went, not risking it mate No, nah, I'm not getting ill from you <laughs> anyway so I'm like ah oh, dumb lad okay right so we get to the, get to the airport we're checking in he goes up to the desk I'm behind him can I upgrade to business please I'm like ah oh, dickhead don't leave me mate yeah. right so yeah not a problem okay cool so I go up yeah check in no stress, go through, we're all in the way area. Now we're boarding. These lads all walk through, they're in now the tunnel, you know the tunnel from the boarding to the plane, they're there. I'm sat, I'm waiting, give the lady my, my ticket. She goes, oh, excuse me, excuse me, sir, there's a problem with your ticket. I thought, what? I've booked the seats. George has sabotaged off, I'm it. I'm ill, like, I booked the seats, I want extra leg room. No, 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 you've got a free upgrade. What? <laughs> you've got, you got a free upgrade? You're next the business. to Mr. Groves. Went, no. <laughs> Burst through. <laughs> Lads, I've got a free upgrade. Walk through. Who am I sat next to in business? No way. This lad. And he's raging. Right? And not only is it not the seats where you can put the thing up, I'm sat next to him <laughs> on the, on the uh, 
a little walkway. So I literally am directly next to yeah, so. you. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're I think it cost me 500 quid. Yeah, you're like, can, I go, <laughs> can, can I go back to club, please? Yeah, so I, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that as well, eh? Yeah. When you started, I was like, did I get food poisoning? And I really it was you, yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was, <laughs> didn't get a chance to shine. Okay, <laughs> feature time. Okay, so this is where the feature usually comes in. As you can tell, I fucked it up this week. I'm not happy about that. But uh, it will come in next week. What I want to know is now you're well established as in McGuigan's gym with Shane, but now you're out on your own to an extent with Lee Cutler. Mm. Does that make you Mikel Arteta to Pep Guardiola here? And does that mean one day you're going to manage your own team? I think that would be the natural That's the way progression. You, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you, you don't, you're not a, an assistant for life. Well, no, I, I don't think Shane will be one to be coaching forever. Good point. So, well. no, he won't forever. He's definitely said that. So, yeah, I think that would be the natural progression. I'd love to have my own, my own stable, my own team, and um, try and do what Shane's done. Mm. What's the big dream then? Like, if you vi try and visualise it now, what does it look like? Are you going to be like... So how many boxers have you got in the gym now? Like, quite a lot of them. Yeah. Like, we had Tundi, he's got like two. Do you, are you yeah. going to be that one? Are you going to be... Even more, are you gonna have no, I think twenty like, fighters? No, 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 I, no. I think too many. You can't give them the right attention. Mm. I think you. That's why we have a lot of success. Is because we did have nine at one point, and that was that was too many. That really? was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was hard. Um, I mean, I was taping eighteen hands a day. That was that was tough. So let alone Shane's shoulders. But yeah, I, I think I think like five fighters is a, is a good number of fighters to have. Especially like you, you want some prospects, you want some sort of championship level fighters. And I think we've got that at the moment. It's like a good, good sort of mix in the gym. Mm. That would, that'd be nice. Sort of, you know, own gym, stable of fighters, a mixed sort of level. Um, but ba ba yeah, basically what we've, what we've got now, what Shane's built. Mm. If there's any young fighters that want to be trained by you, Josh, how do they go about it? Just dropping the Instagram DMs, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Coming for a trial. And what are you looking for? What sort of fight yeah, do you want? Would you like? Um, they don't have to have a certain style. They just they got a, you know, you you look for for certain things which the which makes a decent pro. You know, you want a, an element of toughness. Um, I th I think you can you can train a lot into a fighter. You know, like good feet. You know, good hand defense is that. But like you know, so someone who's calm, comfortable in there tough good chin and um maybe a good 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 feet good shot selection mm. so you're open for business i'm open for business oh yeah yeah i'm open for business yeah i'm probably you're thinking about making a comeback no i'm just thinking that like people will be like mm, yeah i'd have a bit of that and, and and at the moment you'll be working you're in late and you're in that gym so mm. any new people you're in there as well yeah just you're not everyone peeling just hand their cvs in yeah <laughs> no, we'll get get yeah. But, I mean, we we find a lot of talent through sparring. This is where we we normally find a lot of talent. Like that's how how I. Come that's how they, yeah. People yeah. come in to spar the spar the crew, yeah. and then you go, oh, he's good, or she's good. CBS. Yeah, is that CBS. what happened? Sparring partner. Yeah. yeah, he was sparring David, wasn't he? He sparred you as well. And me as well, yeah. Lovely, do you know what we need, George? Yeah, is we at that time now? Yeah, I think we're at that time. We're at that well, time. Uh, actually, before we go into that, because obviously. If you've had a mad journey and a sad one at mm. times you had to overcome that crazy time in what 10 years ago now mm. nearly 10 years ago do you feel like you're I don't know come to terms with it might be the wrong the wrong phrase but do you feel like that chapter is closed even though you said you put your running shoes on and you run now or is it still hard what is it still a hard one or has the success that you've had now as a coach made up for what you what you sort of missed out on I think probably with time, yes, like mm. it all, it all. But no, even now, like I'd still <laughs> love to box. Really, I'd still, you still love hit to, the pads. Not, no, not really anymore. Not much. I might hit the bag now and again. But yeah, like I could say the change. Come on, Shaz, let's hit the pads. But um, I just feel too heavy now. But <laughs> um, no, like uh, yeah, I think over time, more success as a as a coach, mm. as a as a head coach, will will probably cement that, and I'll feel a lot better for it. But Still, I'd still love to box. Do, I'm do, not going to. When you start sit there watching sparring, do you go, oh, I'd batter him. That's a yes. 
<laughs> Why don't we just do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's tough. It is tough. But look, I, I'm I'm in a in a privileged position, and mm. I've you know I absolutely adore what I do. So I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for the world. And I've had some brilliant experiences. I've travelled around the world. I've been in in world title fights with the likes of George and stuff. So that is it's incredible. Well, it's been that pinnacle moment. That was it. The CBS in Bournemouth. It was it, at yeah. The stadium. Sorry, George, but it was it was the it <laughs> was. was similar, no, similar. They've been on a bigger, bigger yeah, journey, yeah. longer journey. Like yeah. you know, it's been um, a long r- long road. The, you know the, the lonely nights in Kent. You know, and the mm. dark, sad nights, the tough nights. Nothing wrong with Kent. Nights. I didn't no, mind. No, no. I didn't mind Kent. Yeah, yeah I love I Kent. Quite, I quite yeah, like you, Kent. you, you, yeah. <laughs> you almost got, you got married, didn't you? Then only Kent. But I, yeah, I've got a girlfriend because got, of Kent. No, I, I, yeah. enjoy, I enjoyed Kent. I yeah. big, up, big up Kent. Shout Kent's out to lovely. Kent University. But I think I think that was I think for CBS that was like a bit of a tough time. You so far away from home. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, a yeah, trick, he isn't it? He didn't, he didn't enjoy Kent. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so all plus it was all, you know they was at the Wandsworth with Jim. It's, it's like an enigma now. It's that's what. Mm. It was so yeah, good. I, I remember it. That was that cool, was yeah. so sick. Yeah. That gym, they had the little coffee hut outside. George used to pre-order his coffee on the train, <laughs> yeah. walk in. Oh, it was wicked. And, you know, if I didn't have all these, the chance of jumping in with a world title, for example, I wouldn't have my nickname, PBK. Yeah, Photo Bomb King. <laughs> have you seen, is, we'll put some, we'll put, we'll Photo send Bomb him, King. I'll send some in, you just chop yeah. this. I thought it was going to be Pretty Boy Kelly. No, no, I was the original. You were the original yeah, way PBK. before, way before, yeah. <laughs> You'd see Bomb like King. George, world title like this, and it'd just be my hands <laughs> or my body just in front of Shane and George. <laughs> oh, incredible! Yeah. Direct eye contact with the camera as well. He knew where the cameras were. Unbelievable! Oh, okay. else does? I want listeners to go look through, look through pictures. Send us the best PBK. It's, it's impressive. Someone find the best PBK. See if for someone us. can top. Yeah, what you the come PBK up with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that's pretty. Hard. You'll never. People will never forget that now. No, every single Proper picture. PBK. Do you still do it now? Yeah, I make a point of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> slide in. PBK. Okay, well, PBK. We got your ring, your nickname. Forget the Punisher. Your PBK now. Yep. Need a tune. Yeah. What's your ring walk track, Josh? Has it changed? No, I d- I d- I'd never really established one. All right. Well, give us one now Now's for the our time. playlist. Oh God. Um, it's got to be all encompassing of who you are in your entire entity. Yeah, everything. Can't just be within the charts. This Every week. facet of your of your being. Oh God. Condensed into a song. What's your gym banger that would you would take on the road? I'm gonna be honest, my my I feel like I've got decent music taste, but the gym Everyone gonna, does, that's what the, the gym's gonna disagree completely. Yeah. I'm the gym DJ. Oh, yeah. That's actually forget about everything. DJ that's PBK. my main role in the yeah. gym, is that I just have control of the speaker. Oh do you? Yeah, and you can't please everyone. Mm. You know, like someone wants You need grime. to come to terms with that as a DJ, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Someone wants eighties. Now it's just whoever's in the ring, they get their playlist. Oh, okay, that's the rule. Yeah. 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 So it's always, it's always Shane yeah. in the ring. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got Ellie's, I've got Ellie's personal playlist on Spotify, yeah. which I may add, she doesn't pay for. She has the. Yeah, the she told me this. You've got to listen to adverts. So, yeah, it's horrific. Yeah, Ellie said she's still if she's, on, if she's on the world phone, champion. You could, you could be midway yeah. through and it'd just be just play a random advert. She's the world champion and she doesn't have Spotify. Shout out Spotify. Yeah, shout out Spotify. Get Ellie Scottney uh, Spotify yeah. login. Spotify, yeah. shout them out. But there, yeah, Ellie Scottney would be, uh, she's the one. Music. A bit of Eminem or something. Oh, which one? That's a big. That's a big uh, vast. I'm field. trying to think of the name it now. Guess who's back? That one. Yeah. What's that song called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shady's back to the front. Yeah. I think if I was a box. This player, looks like a doobie doo. Yeah. Well, it would be, be the comeback now yeah. after ten years. Back, yeah. 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 What song is that? Anyway, it's, it's, uh, uh, without me, by that's Eminem. It. Without me. Yeah. That'd be my tune. If I was, if I was to do it again. Yeah. That's what I'd go into. Because the, the sport feels so empty without you. Correct. Yeah. PBK, Eminem. That's brilliant. It's brilliant. Josh, thanks so much for coming in, pal. Yeah. This is, uh, Nearly good. completed the set. Who we got left from the gym? Well, they Did keep adding more. Every time we think we're done. Oh, Chaos. Chaos Cutler. Chaos. Have you had Craig? Yeah. We've had Craig. Craig back in the day. We had him pre McGuigan's yeah. when he was, oh, when he was raw and organic. Now he'll come in all rehearsed mm. and that, wouldn't he? You know? Mm. So you don't get nothing out of him anymore. No. He's, he's, he's a McGuigan <laughs> man talking now. Talking riddles and that. <laughs> Okay, PBK's in the club. Thank you, mate. Thanks for inviting me.